What is birding? Honestly, it depends on whom you ask. In a broad sense, birding is the active seeking out of bird species. There exists a wide spectrum of types of birders. From the lower extreme, you have the easygoing birders, the ones who leisurely pursue birds in their area. Then, there are the competitive birders, the people who could use binoculars before they were able to walk, the ones who proudly keep life, country, state, and county lists. They want to see as many species in a given time as humanly possible. Birds haunt their dreams. They are, without a doubt, 100% obsessed with birds. A brown bird flies through the sky. What is something I want to look for on the bird to be able to pick it out from any other brown bird that is flying through the sky? There are many different parts of a bird that will differ between species. When identifying different species, knowing these field markings is crucial. With the bird in the top left corner, the brown head, white breast, and rusty sides indicate that this is a female eastern towhee. Sometimes there are species that look exactly alike, and the only way to tell the difference is the sounds they make. But be careful, there are some birds that mimic other birds, such as this northern mockingbird. When deciding to buy a pair of binoculars, there are two numbers that are important. First, the magnification how many times the bird that you are viewing will be magnified. Generally, eight is good enough. For hawk watchers, they prefer 10 to get more detail. <laughs> the second number is the diameter of the lens in millimeters, which determines how much light is let in, which is very important when birding. Spotting scope works in the same way as a pair of binoculars and allows you to see more distant birds such as waterfowl and hawks. They are very complicated like binoculars. There are many different types, sizes, and prices, but there are several guides online depending on your budget and what you want to see. Field guides are an essential tool for a beginning birder. There are several books out there for any birder to select. The best books are Sibley, Peterson, and Crossley. They include a lot of important information from identification features, the range of the bird, and other species that look similar to, similar to them. There's also forums if you have a smartphone, you can get online. They include the same things, including photos and even the sounds of the bird. Oh, yes. Joining a local birding club will enrich your birding experience. They often hold field trips and birding workshops to improve your birding. I started birding when I was about uh, 13, when I was in the Boy Scouts. Uh, well, the best thing to do is buy a field guide. Uh, the best field guide for Eastern North America is Sibley, and uh, get a decent pair of binoculars. Uh, I think a lot of people have a tendency to go out and buy the cheapest pair of binoculars they can find, That's but it's probably better to spend a, a couple of hours, you know, something in the $100 range, uh, at least to start out with, and then you can, you can graduate from there. But birding, some, it's become sort of an obsession. I mean, I, I take my binoculars with me everywhere I go. Even if I'm going to the grocery store, I take my binoculars. <laughs> So I'm always thinking about birding, so especially during migration time when a lot of birds you haven't seen since the previous year come by. And uh, I, I even think about it before I go to bed. I dream, <laughs> I dream about birds. All right, I got my bird identification book, got my spotting scope, make sure this is right. Got my binoculars, got another book here. Where do I go? What <laughs> birds do I look for? <laughs> Letterer Park is another close hotspot known for high songbird populations during migration in summer. Millbrook Marsh is a great hotspot with a wide variety of birds year round. You can walk on a boardwalk over marshland habitat, and there is a small creek that runs through the location. Wetland-associated birds such as red-winged blackbird, belted kingfisher, and rails can be found here. Finches, wrens, and warblers can also be seen. 
A few times a year, a Wilson snipe can be flushed from the creek's bank. The Duck Pond The Duck Pond is a local hotspot less than a mile from campus. With waters that never freeze, this pond is popular for ducks during the winter. Mallards and Canada geese can be readily found here, but occasionally a rare duck, such as a bufflehead, redhead, and long-tailed duck will visit. Grebes, coots, and a local belted kingfisher are other commonly seen birds. Joe Hayes Vista is along the county's southern border on top of Tussie Mountain. This small parking area provides great viewing of the valley below. Fall hawk watchers mostly use the location. Many species of raptors, such as red-tailed hawk, sharp shin hawk, and broad-wing hawk, can be seen in numbers during migration. Scotia Barrens is the largest birding hotspot in Center County. Scotia is a heavily birded area during migration in the summer due to the vast amount of songbirds that can be found here. The forest comprised of oak, aspen, and pitch pine harbor do dozens of species of warblers. It is also a good place to see rough grouse and whippoorwill. Ten acre pond found near the northern entrance can harbor dozens of species of wading birds, shorebirds, and waterfowl. Shiloh Road is a great area to look for a wide variety of birds from raptors to warblers. At the beginning of Shiloh Road next to the highway is an open area with agricultural fields. This area is great to look for wintering raptors such as rough-legged hawks and northern harriers. <laughs>
begin to track those differences by the types of species that you see there, and suddenly your ecological awareness becomes much greater. And, um, and so you're not, so that you're able to detect these changes. And I think as we get more people involved in bird or birding, it makes it much easier for them to understand changes that are much harder to pick up, like climate change or things that are much, have much subtler effects. And so I think it's really important for us to get kids birding, um, to get, you know, get birding in the school and really get, keep this public awareness and, and this enthusiasm for birding going. Look at the airplane. The airplane. Oh, oh, I didn't even know where you're pointing. <laughs>